Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, auto aviation makes headway on Solera, also Cessna crash found via iPad location, and AAMS sues federal government. Happy Friday, thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Auto aviation makes headway on Solera. Auto aviation has completed testing of its Solera 500L aircraft, marking 51 hours of flight time across 55 successful flights. The aircraft's final phase one test flight was flown entirely on sustainable aviation fuel. The Solera is expected to demonstrate fuel economy of 18 to 25 miles per gallon against a private jet's equivalent of three miles per gallon and hourly operating costs under $330 an hour with a 4,500 nautical mile range, seating for six, and a max cruise of over 460 miles per hour at 50,000 feet, the Solera could shape up to be a powerful contender if it can meet its targets. Phase one testing sought to compare the prototype against industry standards and refine the design of the Solera with real world data. The optimizations are important to reach their milestones, reaching similar performance figures to light jets using a liquid-cooled V12 with 550 horsepower. The Solera boasts drag, about 41% of similar-sized conventional aircraft and a 20 to 1 glide ratio. Auto's plan include a B round of funding while they begin certification and find a home base. As development continues and orders are placed, a C round is expected to run from 2023 to 2025 when they will build a manufacturing facility and complete initial commercial deliveries. After the break, NASA responds to Russian anti-SAT test. Details after these messages. During this season of Thanksgiving, you're probably appreciating the rebound of aviation after the tough times of the last couple of years. To help share that joy and that energy with you, you'll save 21% on all King Schools courses now through December 2nd. Just use the code word PUMPKIN at checkout. So happy holidays, and we hope to see you soon at, at the, the airport. airport. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon Fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the record out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. NASA responds to Russian anti-SAT test. Astronomers were treated to a front row seat to a space whodunit as the Russian ELINT satellite Cosmos 1408 was turned into a cloud of high-speed debris. The long-defunct satellite was replaced in service in 1994 and has been inoperative for decades, making it a possible target for anti-satellite technology testing. So, Russia tested an anti-satellite technology weapon against it, fragmenting the sat into countless pieces endangering the ISS and other satellites in orbit. NASA has protested the action. Supply chain woes reach Avidyne. Avidyne posted a notice on its underform warning of 
unprecedented supply chain challenges in recent months. The company states that they have exhausted all options at maintaining costs and component availability, including stocking electronics 52 plus weeks in advance of production needs. But suppliers have canceled or pulled out of orders. New component shortages and price increases on the wholesale side occur daily, according to engineer Steve Lindsay. Colorado NVG Air Tractor Crashes A Fireboss firefighting aircraft has crashed while tending to the Kruger Rock Fire with one fatality. Meant to be a historic first for the region, the aircraft was making history as the first instance of nighttime firefighting in Colorado as it sought to contain the blaze that has consumed an estimated 133 acres of its 15% containment as of November 16th. The NVG Augmented Air Tractor Fire Boss went down near Hermit Park, less than 100 miles northeast of Denver, Colorado. Flight Radar 24 removed from Chinese services. The aircraft tracking and route viewing app Flight Radar 24 recently disappeared from online stores in China, and hundreds of ADSB devices have been seized in what seems to be a government crackdown on aviation hobbyist data collection. Chinese national security authorities claim that various foreign institutions have been trying to recruit citizens to share data with them in an apparent effort to track and monitor the transit of aircraft throughout the country. The collection and transfer of such information could be deemed illegal under Chinese data law. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Cessna crash found via iPad and two people are lucky to be alive. A father-daughter flight duo involved in a plane crash were rescued by location tracking capability of their devices, said rescuers. Teams initially believed they were dispatched for a recovery operation, only to find, with the assistance of family, that the crash coordinates could be found quickly for an accurate, timely rescue. Chief James Serafin of the Bear Creek Volunteer Host Company said that survivors of crashes in the area were rarely survivable, owing to heavy forestation. The landing site took the survivors through a section of dense vegetation in the cold Pennsylvania woods. I can honestly say I think every rescuer out there was planning this to be a recovery rather than a rescue. And nobody was more surprised than when I first got to the plane and found they were alive, said Sergeant John Richards with Pennsylvania State Police. With the Pennsylvania State Police, officers from the Wilkes-Barre Patrol Unit were alerted to a possible plane down at around 2030 Sunday evening, 25 miles south of Scranton, being told that a Cessna 150 had disappeared from radar with two souls aboard. When they learned of the daughter's iPad, they queried the GPS coordinates and immediately narrowed their search zone, finding them both as a result. After these messages, the Association of Air Medical Services is suing the federal government. I'll have those details after the break. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Zephyr is what you have always wanted. A highly capable two-seat turbine-powered helicopter with great ramp appeal. 100 mile per hour cruise speed, 172 nautical mile range, and to top it all off, a first of its kind emergency airframe parachute system, the Curdy Design Zephyr. Unique, advanced, innovative, and highly capable. Your ultimate freedom machine is available now at zephyr.eu. 
Welcome back. The Association of Air Medical Services is suing the federal court, challenging interim final regulations of the No Surprises Act. They believe that aspects of implementation of the act, as they currently stand, have left them unfairly vulnerable in comparison to other entities in the insurance ecosystem, owing to the special factors Air Ambulance Service involves. They state that they continue to support the aims of the act, including the removal of patients from the middle of billing disputes between air ambulance providers and their patients' insurers. The point of dispute lies in the dispute resolution process, a tool meant to open negotiation between providers and insurers, where both would make their case for payment before an independent entity based on statutory factors. The interim regulations issued, however, ignore congressional intent, says the AAMS. They focus instead on one factor, the qualified payment amount or the insurer's median in-network rate for only a subset of their contracts for a given service in each area. The process ignores many factors inherent to air medical service, like aircraft type, the quality of service provided in route, and the acuity of the patient that must be considered going forward to ensure the sustainability of the industry. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.